Hi folks, it's Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And today's video is going to be a very controversial one. But again, I'm going to outline some facts. And today's video is about how much water should I drink in a day? How do I know how much water I should drink? And who should I listen to about how much water I should drink? Well, let's break it down. The human body on average is made up of about 70% of water. So as I'm sitting here now, if you look at my total body volume, about 70% of that is water, is water. So the imagination we have 70% of my body is water, surely I, I need to be putting a lot of that in. False. Because the human body very tightly regulates water. And the first thing that regulates hydration, that regulates your water consumption, your water loss, two major things, maybe three, three major things that regulate fluid shifts. Number one, ambient temperature. Ambient temperature. So it's very hot. Obviously, you need a little bit more. You're going to lose a little bit more water. If it's very cold, you need less. Number two, your metabolic rate, including exercise. Because here's the beauty about the human body. Just think this through, okay? The human body runs on energy. It's the single most important thing that the body provides for itself. Energy comes in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And all of those three have a backbone of three molecules, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So those molecules get broken down a little bit, go into the mitochondria that releases energy or that transfers energy that is stored between carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and transfers it into an adenosine phosphate molecule, ATP, AMP, ADP. Okay? They pick up the energy and then can use that energy for function. On the back end of the mitochondria comes out two things, maybe three if you're eating protein. H2O, water, and CO2, carbon dioxide. We breathe out the carbon dioxide and we pee out the water. So we manufacture water out of what we eat. We manufacture water, everything we eat that we use for energy becomes water. H2O. So we manufacture water. And then the third thing that regulates our fluid status, our blood pressure, our blood volume, our fluid status, is sodium chloride, salt. And then the other electrolytes influence your salt concentration. So ambient temperature and the amount of work you do, which is both based on heat as well as energy production, and salt, sodium chloride. And all you are doing when you drink, when your body says, I'm thirsty, all you're doing is topping up the fractional difference between water production in your body and water that gets lost through urine, through poop, through sweat. Very simple. And it is a tiny fraction tiny fraction of fluid flux and the human body is very very stringently geared to triggering you when you need to drink water so when you are thirsty drink and as soon as your thirst is quenched your brain will tell your body stop drinking so it's very tightly regulated and if you listen to your body you will always drink enough not too little too much as long as you got access so when you're drinking water, very tightly controlled by the human body. However, the majority of us don't drink water. We drink Coke, we drink sugary drinks, we drink protein shakes, we drink coffee, we drink a variety of other things that may affect our volume. Caffeine affects it. Sugar absolutely affects it. Because every molecule of sugar is attached to six molecules of water. You take that uh, water in, and then you burn off the sugar, you store the sugar, now you're creating more water, and you're leaving a bunch of free water. And you become waterlogged. And you need a lot more water just in terms of drinking sugar than you do if you're burning fat. Fat doesn't like water, sugar does. So the bottom line is this. Don't let anybody ever, ever tell you how much water you should drink on any given day. And they love to tell us, oh, you've got to drink 64 gallons of water, blah, blah, blah. Irrelevant. 
Nobody knows how much water you, you need to drink, but your body knows and it'll tell you right away and drink water when you're thirsty. I don't care if you drink coffee or those other things for pleasure, but do not drink them for thirst. Drink water for thirst, drink the other fluids for your brain. I've just started, I like to vary up my exercise, but Ketone IQ that sponsored a paper, uh, a study done in Belgium at the Leuven uh, University in Belgium, uh, they looked at um, boosting sprint power and boosting recovery. So I put this to the test. Now, uh, you'll hear me talk about my sprints on the track, but I did a few additional things. Number one, my friend Sean Baker holds the world's uh, um, long distance rowing, land rowing. So I did some land rowing. I did some swimming. Now, I'm not a big swimmer, but I did some swim times. Then I did some biking. And um, I just used my regular bike, not a speed bike. But I did those three things in sprint intervals. And the way it works is you choose, let's say, uh, 50 meters or 100 meters of swimming and you swim as fast as you can. Or you cycle three kilometers or five kilometers as fast as you can, basically a sprint race. Or you row for 10 minutes and you see how many cycles you can do in five or 10 minutes. And I took, on some days, regular ketone IQ. I then took the ketone IQ with caffeine. And I'd already proven this on my land sprints around a track. But every one of those modalities, in the water, on a bike, or on a rowing machine, every one showed a statistically faster speed over a block of time and faster heart rate recovery because I do these repetitively faster heart rate recovery just based on ketones and providing those ketones to my muscles try it folks so I drink coffee I sip on coffee throughout the day for my brain it's got a secondary value of hydration but and there are days when I may not even drink any water because I'm not thirsty but there are days when I drink a lot of water because I'm thirsty and the single most important thing you can do is take in a significant quantity of salt, sodium chloride. The average person, depending on your height, should be between three and five grams of salt a day. Five grams is a level teaspoon. Your body can handle excess salt. It cannot handle salt deficiency. And whether you're taking an electrolyte mix, whether you're taking magnesium, or you're taking just regular salt, please make sure on a regular basis in your fluids, as well as in your food, you take in salt. And if you've got adequate salt, you can adequately protect and ration your water and it lowers how much water you actually need because salt will preserve that. There will be a little bit of loss. You will need to drink, but a very, very small amount. Final statement I'll make is that human beings are the only mammalian species that normally pee dilute urine. All animals pee very concentrated urine because they don't drink that much. Urine is a soluble waste product. It is not necessarily a product to get rid of excess water. And when you overhydrate, you're over getting rid of the electrolytes that are required and you're creating electrolyte havoc, blood pressure, blood volume havoc by over drinking. It is a very bad thing to do. It is safer and better to slightly under drink than it is to over drink. And yes, at times when our losses were excessive and we consumed a lot of sugar, we waterlogged. We waterlogged and athletes were warned, drink, 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 drink. But it's salt, not water. So be very cautious about overhydration and don't listen to anyone who tells you about a fixed amount you have to drink every day. Your body knows, nobody else does. Leave comments, please.